Catherine Denham was a woman of many talents, both in the arts and science. Her drive in activism could be seen from early moments as a child to the end of her long-lived life. She was born on June 22, 1909 in Chicago, to an African-American father who was a descendant of slaves from Madagascar and West Africa, as well as her French-Canadian mother. Catherine began performing from a very young age, beginning within her local Methodist church in Joliet. She was prompted towards such actions as she wanted to help with the financial crisis that the church had faced. She then proceeded in her creativity as she performed non-religious songs at a cabaret party to help raise money for the same financial crisis. Although talent was clearly evident, Catherine had not considered a career in the arts and instead followed her brother, Albert Dunham Jr., to the University of Chicago. It was here that she earned a bachelor, master's, and doctoral degree in anthropology after becoming one of the first African-American women to attend the university. At the same time, she became a student of Lyudmila Speranzeva, formerly known as the Moscow Theater. After graduating from university, she found the Negro Dance Group, thus beginning her legacy. Catherine studied ethnochoreography, also known as dance anthropology. Ethnochoreography, another term for the days, is defined as the study of dance, movement, and culture, which aims to extend knowledge and understandings of diverse cultures and the movement experiences that these cultures offer. In terms of the specific area of anthropology in which she studied, her work tied to culture. Through cultural anthropology, Catherine was able to study both past and present cultures, while keeping questions such as why and how, due to natural curiosity as well as why is there social and political inequality. The interest led to Catherine's goal that she carried with her through the remainder of her life. Through her early studies, Catherine developed a goal to celebrate the richness of the culture of Africa and the African diaspora. As her passion continued, her work traveled with her to the Caribbean, the culture she chose to immerse herself in. To do this, she followed the principles of ethnology as she immersed herself within this culture for months while taking meticulous notes to benefit her research. But how did this happen? Okay. Hey, let's just search up Catherine Dunham, see what comes up. Yes. Okay. Great idea. Okay. <gasps> As stated, the legacy of Catherine Dunham began after discovering the Negro Dance Group and the influential people that came with it. After being formed and known as the Ballet Negre, the group performed its debut performance in 1931 at the annual Beau Arts Ball in Chicago. Attending this event was Miss Alfred Rosenwald Stern, who was incredibly impressed, so much in fact that she arranged for Catherine to appear before the Rosenwald Foundation. In this meeting, Catherine was offered a great amount of financing, allowing her to study any area of interest as long as it contributed towards her dance career. With her goal in mind, she set off for the Caribbean to begin further anthropological research. Traveling throughout the region in areas such as Trinidad and Jamaica, Catherine studied all aspects of dance and the motivations behind it. As much as these areas sparked curiosity and interest, it was not until her trip to Haiti that she found personal and artistic purpose. With this interest, it soon led to fascination when she learned of the dance religion known as Vodum. With her gathered information, including several scholarly essays, Catherine returned home for the next stage of her work. First, she would present to her sponsors at the Rosenwald Fund, and then the world. With gathered information and a groundbreaking message for the time, she revolutionized American dance in the 1930s. This was made possible as she used the roots of black dance and rituals and transformed them into choreography that was both artistic and significant to people of all kinds. Whether one was young or old, black or white, a connection could be made from his or herself to the work created. Amazingly for the time, the choreography spoke to the European-dominated dance world due to the diversity the area was exposed to. 
Evidently, Catherine presented her newly discovered information through dance. However, when returning home, she also shared her feelings through photos, videos, and writings conducted while immersing herself in communities apart from the trip. Other methods of research used in anthropological studies include recording the various social institutions in relationship to each other in the village of Akamping, complete uninstructured interviews while observing and participating in native dance. No matter where she was, she was sure to complete field work. With great success, Catherine opened her first school, the Katie School of Arts and Research, in Chicago of 1944. A year later, with continued success, she opened the Dunham School in New York, well known to artists such as James Dean, who took classes there. Next was the opening of the Windsor Theatre Group, Topics, and Le Jazz Hot, then the founding of the Catherine Dunham Dance Group which led progressed to the Catherine Dunham Company, proudly devoted to African-American and Afro-Caribbean dance. She was a busy woman in that decade with a group famous for combined, innovative interpretations of Caribbean dances, traditional ballet, African rituals, and African-American rhythms. This new and exciting style became known as the Dunham Technique. The group achieved great success in America, allowing them to tour Europe. In 1948, it was the time that Europe had been black as a dance form. Another groundbreaking moment in history is that this moment was also the first time that special elements of American modern dance appeared outside America. Years later, Catherine Dunham was seen not on the stage, but in the classroom after an invitation in 1965 to be an artist in residence at Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. The passion that she had for anthropology was seen again as she established a dance anthropology program close by in Edwardsville. In the following years, Catherine was at work again this time using her artistic talent and anthropology-related knowledge to put diminish the violent energy of street gangs. As pleasing as the success of Catherine Dunham seems, her accomplishments would not have been possible had she not overcome some troubling hurdles. In 1950, she and her dance group faced refused rooms in a first-class hotel in Brazil. She overcame this hurdle by publicizing the situation which resulted in the Afonso Ernest Law, detailing that any sort of racial discrimination in Brazil would be considered a felony. Her audience faced racism as well, such as in Kentucky, where no people of color are allowed to sit in orchestra seats. She overcame this hurdle by bringing awareness to the beauty of diversity. In 1992, Catherine increased her activism by going on a 47-day hunger strike to protest the discrimination Haitian boat people faced from the U.S. government. Before marrying her husband, a white man, the two avoided the controversy and had a ceremony in Mexico where interracial relationships compared to the U.S. were more accepted. More trouble was faced when the couple returned home, seeing as their marriage was not recognized to be legal. Jumping over yet another hurdle, Catherine Dunham was married to her love in a quiet ceremony in Las Vegas of 1949. The astounding work of an individual with strength, intelligence, bravery, and passion has left the public with little to critique. From the beginning of her career to the legacy it holds today, the name of Catherine Dunham is associated almost entirely with praise. After writing several books, appearing in several films, directing books herself, advocating for racial equality, and earning numerous honorary doctorates, awards, and honors, Catherine Dunham peacefully died on May 21, 2006 at the age of 96.